Has it started? Yeah, it has started. Okay. Hello, guys. Welcome to our live. Today, I will be showing you our faces first. And uh, as you can see, Ewan's face has become very small there at the corner. So I'm going to try and enlarge yeah. it for the benefit of all our viewers because everybody loves Ewan. Okay. So I hope everybody can see us clearly. Pardon my skin. I haven't been yeah. touching up my, my skin care. <laughs> Hello, guys. Oh my god. Skin care routines. When I mean, you spend all day at home, you would think that you would pay more attention to your skin. But in return, you're just like, ah, it's because I'm at home. And hence, that's why I don't pay as much attention to my skin. Hey, I try. It's not like I don't. It's just yeah. harder than it seems. Yeah. Just before we kick it off, I'm just going to hear, get a third person view of what we sound like. Sounds good. And... I, I don't hear any noise. Yeah. So that's good. Very good. Okay. Okay. Sorted. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ah, okay. So that's cool. I can see us talking and doing talking things, which I think is important hmm? in these live stream things. People go live to hear other people, no, to talk, so that other people hear them talk, and therefore, right. they are talking. So, okay. right. Anyway, so we came like came on live today because Yuvan has something very important to share with all of you. So Yuvan, why don't you kick it off for the for the rest of the world? Oh my God! I mean, we really enjoyed going live, so we figured, uh, why the hell not? And when it experience, gee, I shrunk again. Um, yeah, but anyway, if you jump to, can you fix that while jumping to another scene? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so when, um, when I was going about, I was like, going about check like, is the check is a website that I use to update, to update, myself, to update like, myself on what's available now in the tech world and not. And so, um, Aya Neo is a company that has announced their world's first uh, seven nanometer handheld gaming device. And what stood out was that um, it's using the Ryzen 5, um, the 4000 series Ryzen 5 chip from AMD. And th that chip, uh, though it's a U series chip, it's actually pretty powerful in context of like um, graphics and playing at decent graphics, I think at medium settings or medium high settings uh, for 1080p gaming. But of course, this comes at the cost of it only being 7 inches and runs an NVMe SSD with a decent 16 gigs of RAM. Am I, am I on my screen or? No, now you're on your face. Oh, okay. We can go to my screen. It seems that every time you switch windows, uh, it, mm -hmm. it changes the size of your input or something here on my side. So that's why you keep changing sizes. So right now you are super enlarged, like insanely enlarged. I can I see that I'm very enlarged. <laughs> that is so weird. Okay, as long as your face is in the view, right? Okay, there we go. Yeah. Good enough, I guess. Good enough, I guess. It's it's weird it's that weird. it doesn't do that during the during the trial and during before we go live. But as soon as we click live, then it then troubles with encoding us with the lock frame. Well, what do you know? Computers, they have flaws. <laughs> 
<laughs> it seems like a bit of a ridiculous flaw, la. But okay, if you can go to my my screen, the, I shared the, the, Indiegogo, I shared the Indiegogo site site. So it's a crowd. So it's a crowd funder. Um, um, but but a gig of RAM, gig of RAM, NVMe, 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 kind of like the, kind of like the standard, standard fast, fast gaming PC gaming standard. PC like standard you would start like off with start a off good, with a amount good of RAM, amount of RAM, and and with a nice IPS display. So so and and what's curious is that this kind of brings back the vibes of PSP, right? The whole place. Whole PlayStation, and, and I remember, I like, remember like, like one point, one point. If you go to if Gurney you go to Gurney Plaza, Plaza, or like the mall, like the mall, all, all, the, kids all the kids are holding their PSP and walking, PSP around, around, walking around, facing down, facing downwards. downwards. And, and this, this kind of brings, kind of that, brings that whole whole PC gaming, PC gaming experience, experience to a mobile. To a mobile. Uh, setup, uh, setup, and and it seems it pretty seems impressive, pretty impressive for, what for what it's offering. La. La. Um, there um, isn't, a, there video isn't a video as to what, as to what, but the fact that but they the fact that they can claim claim Cyberpunk 2077 at uh, uh, the run the run more than and more than 30, than 30 FPS. FPS. That's kind of a high kind of claim. A high don't claim. you think? Don't you think? Being that it's being the standard, that it's the standard of intensive of intensive graphic usage. graphic usage. G G. Don't you think? Don't you think so? Thirty so? FPS gaming. Yeah, for yeah. the for the for device, the, for the device cyber to run cyber thirty at thirty FPS. FPS. Ah. I'd say might as well not have the device at all. It's a waste of time. For real? For real? The thirty the thirty FPS FPS is video okay? Video uh, okay? No, not at all. Thirty FPS for gaming is like uh, trying to watch a movie released in four K on a TV that like only output seven twenty p. But but mm. most most the thing is the that thing confuses is that confuses me. Right? me right? Moves, run it run it twenty four FPS. Movies run yeah. And these and these movies and games are two different. Things. And and so if a so game, if a game. Obviously, but I mean, if a game runs at twenty four FPS, isn't it as smooth as a script, like a movie at twenty four FPS? Sure, if you are watching a movie and not playing a game. When I mean, games, you are controlling the motion, meaning the speed at which you move your mouse is the speed at which the screen is being panned. So. Movies have a controlled movement in terms of their camera panning and their scenes. So being at 24 FPS comes with the super steadiness of your camera recording the movie. But when it comes to games, you are in control of what's moving on the screen. Meaning that 24 FPS is just going to cause a lot of screen distortion whenever you move because chances are you're going to be moving around a lot, which is the point of a game, right? You are in control of the game. Which is why twenty five FPS is too low, right? For 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 a game. That this is why you don't see movies, right? Um, going at higher frame rates than twenty four because there is no necessity. As long as you have super steadiness and you are in control of your scene recordings, you can go as low as ten FPS for 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 all we care. We wouldn't notice a difference. But if it's gaming, we are the ones who are in control. And we are moving. You feel the difference. You feel the sluggishness of the scene, of the gameplay. It ruins the immersiveness of the game, which is why I think 30 FPS for a game, even on my PC, even at 60 FPS, I feel like it's 60 FPS is playable. It's like your benchmark. It's like the the the, the minimum is the 60 FPS is the minimum, but 30 FPS. I think they the in an age where we have 144 hertz on uh, on on basic uh, gaming monitors and 120 hertz now on most um, flagship smartphones, having 30 FPS for a gaming device for a handheld gaming device is a little bit pointless in my opinion. Right, the screen's doing that weird thing again. Mm. I think I think it's fair but I think that's what I think they should have to work on as well uh, the idea that it's going to run an integrated graphics is kind of the question of whether they're going to be able to pull it off 
the problem is also that it's a crowd fund which really like questions you know because they are offering quite a lot being able to output to two external monitors once you dock it is also a pretty high claim um I, this word i think this word is kind of what represents a lot of it uh, the fact that if it's not, if it's a handheld pc for productivity that you can port around like a surface sort of a idea that you can port around your this one and then come back home dock your surface and to an output to a like a pc like experience so that would mean a lot more practical in the sense of productivity when it comes to gaming i think like you said i mean i cannot speak for gamers cuz i barely play much but i think the expectation is a lot higher when it comes to how it performs and i don't know so well that sounds like well, i don't know it sounds like um uh like a uh, last resort um practicality effect of having a handheld gaming device it's like okay if i'm going to come back and dock it on my computer might as well have the game on my computer because whatever function whatever other productivity functions i'm going to have with the handheld device chances are i can do it with a with a smartphone today it will be a, a redundant device unless you are looking to remove the presence of a smartphone entirely which i think is not very likely or if you are going to dock it onto a monitor that isn't connected to a C, uh, to a pc so if you don't want to have a pc at home yeah that's what, that's what i mean when you don't have a pc at home yeah then i guess it makes some sense but even right. then the handheld device like like we spoke about earlier if the uh, gpu itself is only capable of 30 fps meaning whatever i display on my monitor is going to also be at 30 fps or less right because the ryzen chip can output at 4k 30 only i if i'm right and they didn't specify anything on this side as well whether it's a usb 3.2 or what not being that it's ryzen there's no way it's thunderbolt so i don't think you get i i can't see if you're getting 4k 60 but it they're offering quite a bit la we'll have to just see for now the most related news is that the launch date has been postponed because um they claim that their factory uh has been shut down so you mean for but for we'll have to fps does mean that at lower resolutions it can go higher right like it can hit a higher frame rate yeah 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 generally yeah. It, it should be able to output 1080 at uh, 1080 to 1440 at 60 and 4k at 30 but that really depends on the usb port if it's a 3.2 then yes but if it's a 3.0 then you're looking at 430 i mean that's that's not bad if it's a, if it's 4k at 30 fps that's kind of decent because i mean our graphics cards today uh, aside from the from the nvidia rtx 30 series can can't handle 40 uh, 4k at anything more than 30 fps anyway so oh Wait, so 30 series wait i think it handles 8k output no i said anything aside from the from the from the 30 series right yeah, so the 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 mm. selling point of the, of the rtx 30 series the 3070 80 and 90 is that one it hits 8k at decent frame rate yes. as uh, if i'm not mistaken it was 60 fps for the rtx 3090 and that if you're playing 4k it can go up to 100 20 fps or 60 fps right so having a handheld device okay. that can play 4k at 30 fps means that if i'm going to decide to lower the resolution which is something that i'm probably going to do anyway so then i i will get a higher refresh rate which makes the device a little bit more practical right Yeah, something interesting. I was just scrolling down to the iron ear and uh, I followed up with a GPD Win 3. This is what we saw on Unbox Therapy's latest video uh referencing the 40,000 setup, the 40,000 gaming PC setup. So uh really do 
had docked this on the side of his chair. And I had found that um, it's kind of another handheld device, which is kind of smart as to why the worst was 7 Um, the world's first Windows 10 slider candy bar. Like, it's essentially not the world's first handheld gaming console. They try to just win it off at, like, oh, yeah, mine is a slider candy bar version and mine is a 7 nanometer chip version. But I don't think neither are the first handheld PC devices. This one is one that swipes up. It has a a keyboard, which is pretty cool, actually. And... uh, same specs, running 11th gen Intel Core with the Iris XE, um, 16 gigs of DDR4M. Oh, not bad. Uh, clock speed at 4266. Um, it's touch keyboard. Okay, so it's not a touch screen with the Thunderbolt 4. So this one outputs at 4K60. Um, 3D, one terabyte of NVMe storage, and it is said to run all of these games at this FPS. GTA 5 at 84 FPS. Um, Witcher 3. Yeah, they're all pretty decent above 60, other than Flight Simulator. But that's been a, that's been known to burden the 30 series as well. I'm curious as to how they can get God of War on PC. Is that- I thought it was a PlayStation only game, no? That was the latest God of War. The um, right. I can't remember the name of the game, but yeah, it was God of War Four. This one is God of War Three. Right. God of War Four was a right. PS4 only game, a PS only game. But I'm certain if you can load an okay. emulator on your device, then you would be able to play it. If I'm not mistaken, PlayStation mm. itself has their own um, PS4, PS emulator for Windows, but you got to pay a subscription, which is why I didn't bother doing it. Yeah. The emulator... I haven't tried an emulator, but I've seen a lot of people doing the emulator for 8-bit games, like their old Game Boy, Pokemon Ruby type games. Honestly, right, compared to what we saw on the Iron Neo, what this company offers, the JPD Win 3, seems a lot more attractive. We just we just literally spoke about docking it to a PC setup, being able to get more than 60 FPS on decent AAA titles and um, Thunderbolt 3, so outputting at 4K. Not bad at all. It looks like this is a... It's a trend, huh? Everyone seems to want to move to a handheld gaming device. But, I mean... I still want it to be a PC that runs the stand. <laughs> I mean, why not just upgrade your phones to be able to play them? Like, if most people... I, I guess it's a specific niche of a gamer community that is going to want to spend money on this device. Like, you know how we always say that the, that the PSP... Is uh, was very much ahead of its time. Yeah. So I guess now they are trying to like hit that niche where you people want to carry around a handheld uh, gaming device. But if you look at it, even I feel um, the was it the Nintendo Wii? Was it called the Switch? The one with the red one side and the yeah yeah the other Nintendo Switch. Yeah, Nintendo yeah. Switch. While it, while it is uh, popular, it wasn't. It didn't do as well as people thought it would do. Right. Because the Nintendo Switch had was pretty attractive in a sense that you could detach the side controllers, and. I think it had a gyroscope, right, that you could use to play the sports, the Wii Sports version games and, and whatnot, yeah. if I'm right. It, yeah, I'm surprised that that didn't do well. Like, there were a lot of... The Nintendo Wii was kind of like uh, a trend at one point, together with the PS3 and 
I think it was that era, right? The PlayStation 3 and the Nintendo Wii and whatnot. But, man, it's an interesting concept as to why they would want to switch their, essentially switch their full pledge um, device into a handheld. Oh, wow. They also offer the idea of um, using this G and then plugging it into an eGPU when you dock it into the PC. So essentially, you're running 11th gen Intel processor, 16 gigs of RAM, any GPU. You've essentially built yourself a PC with, of course, obviously shit cooling, but like, <laughs> I mean, it really depends on how the device manages to keep cool instead of thermal thr- throttling and whatnot. La. Dual 4K outputs at 60 hertz. Dude, I'm scrolling down and down and down and it's just not ending. I see why all of this sounds very like, uh, like it has a lot of features. I just don't see the appeal for it at all. I'm just seeing a redundant version of PCs which are inherently going to be a lot stronger than this device. Like, why why am I carrying around a, a, a handheld device that is supposedly more computer than my smartphone? You won't have your social services, your social device, social applications. It is the same appeal that the PS3 had, right? That it is just a, a gaming device. And if you are not into the... And, and since PlayStation and all don't make that anymore, then there is sort of a gap in the market as to handheld gaming devices. Outside the Switch. The Switch has seemed to have dominated and monopolized the, the industry. Is there another one? I don't think so. Nothing coming. Nothing comes to mind. I don't know. I I have a feeling that I will never at any point buy a, buy a handheld gaming device. Like I don't even play games on my phone. And the smartphone gaming community is a, is a large community that likes gaming on their phone specifically because it's uh it's a phone right and you you be you play games that are mobile application games and not pc games and there are already phones yeah. that have been invented by companies like like rog and they created the rog phone that is a phone that has mobile applications yeah. and all of that and runs games at better cooling and higher frame rates Mm. That's, I think that's kind of where the the confusion starts to happen as to how you want to make a, a Windows device uh, portable. Like I, I, I remember at one point I texted you and was just like, Windows tablet mode like sucks. Like it just sucks. Like it's not as intuitive to use and everything. So how are you going to like figure out Windows on the, on the device that uses joysticks? Like... It's n- I don't know what the user experience is going to be like outside of games, or whether they're going to have an U- a UI over the over Windows to make it more PSP like in its terms. But overall, it is a weird direction to go in. It will it will be, but it will be interesting to see hmm. how the market grows, whether or not the market grows, to see like what specific niche they, yeah. they're hitting. Um, for you to want a device that uh, that you can carry around, essentially being able to dock it anywhere and have a computer um, on the ready. Yeah. I think it sort of acts as an in-between to when, ideally, the way I look at it is that smartphones are getting really powerful now. I think the new ROG 5, is it the 5 or the 4, it's said to come out with um, base 16 gigs of RAM. And and that is starting to come and like meet cross ties with uh, with PC level specs. And the Samsung S21 Ultra comes with half a terabyte of storage. And so that, conver- that convergence of um, PC specs meeting up with smartphone specs is kind of like the dream of where you can dock your smartphone and it completely, you'd use one single device for all of your purposes, you know, rather than having an isolated gaming PC, a laptop and a phone. 
you can like remember when Razer had the idea to dock your smartphone on top of the trackpad. Um, so you dock it over and use the smartphone screen as your trackpad, and essentially your smartphone would power the Razer PC. So it would transform into a device as such. And I think this kind of is in the in between of both of those portability slash being a full pledge working machine, you know, like a powerful working machine. It has specs that are more powerful than entry level laptops at this point, you know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it has it has good specs in terms of like they they have good names attached to them. They they they're working with Ryzen. They have they even have RTX GPUs, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I I genuinely don't know how this market is going to play out, but it it is fascinating to see to to see how it can grow. Because essentially, yeah, it will be we interesting. Are, we, are, we are we are playing with we are trying to combine two different worlds here. We are, we are, we are trying to combine um, the 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 more portable, more um, more personal device like your smartphone that has social applications and all and whatnot. And the other world, which is like your your PC, which is where you have productivity, where you do work on, where you play, uh, where, you, where you where you get a more immersive experience in your in your gaming, and you're trying to squeeze that all into one device that is able to power all of those features, all, all of those um, ideas. So you can just carry that one device and like yeah. go to your friend's house and dock it to 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 his his monitor. And then you would be able to use yeah. your computer there, kind of. Essentially, yeah, kind it, of, yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool, though. The thing is that <laughs> it directly competes with very large markets, with large companies that produce um, PC parts, um, PC gaming parts, which is a pretty big industry, uh, a, a, a big and even a competitive industry at the moment. They are yeah. direct competition, not just to PCs, but also like, to smartphones. And even gaming laptops, technically. They're trying to become a one-for-all device, which is something yeah. that we spoke about um, last year. Last year, I think. I, I think so. I think so. Oh, my God. So, that's why I wanted to show you moving to the ASUS website. Um... It's pretty cool thing. That's why I went back to the front page just as to show the um, graphic intro. <laughs> yeah. So this is the new um, the new releases from the ROG. But all of these devices are standard um, laptops um, that run the new RTX 30 series and the 5000 series AMD chips. Uh, also sucks that everything that you see on the table and the shelf do not have webcams. Like, I don't know what is wrong with Asus. All of those laptops that are on the two shelves don't have webcams. Like, <laughs> they're just, it's, I don't get it. Um, the only one that does is the Fluex 13, which we can just jump to real quick. Um to talk about was the fact that um, the Zephyrus 14 uh, was given um, as the YouTubers and whatnot. And um, the refreshed version is a really decent laptop. If you remember, I've been hunting for a laptop for a long time, guys. Like, this has been a hunt that has been going on since last August, September. And um, finally, it came to a conclusion. It's still not with me yet, but um, the Zephyrus. 14 was high key in 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 the deduction and the fact that it didn't have a webcam just kind of ruined the entire experience it's like yeah it's going to be a great device for productivity and whatnot but like imagine i pick up a, and the, especially with this time video calls and, and and google team classes and all it's almost essential to have a, a webcam a decent webcam and Remind me to move on to the next segment, which is how come webcams are still shitty? Like, how come there's no decent webcam out there that's cheap? Like, I really want to talk about you for a second. But, um, okay, so this is the X-Flow 13, right? And it's a 13-inch 
um, 13 inch 2 in 1 laptop by Asus starting at um, 6000 ringgit. Uh, it's pretty steep for an Asus device, if you ask me, but it, I think it competes directly with Dell's XPS series. And the XPS series goes up to about 13,000 and starts off at about 6499. So this seems to be a direct competition to the XPS 2-in-1. And um, it runs a Ryzen 5000, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, but if you look at the graphics card, it runs a 1650, which is kind of the, what the market calls an entry-level graphics card. If you ask me, I think it's a pretty okay. It does the job for any, any titles that you throw at. Um, and they have fit this all in a 13-inch device. And I think it weighs like 1.3 kilograms. So what stands out for this is that it kind of offers the same prospect that the, um, what was it, the GPD Win, Win 13 or whatever was offering, which is that you can use this device as a portable gaming device for, for everyday use. And when you bring it back home, you connect it to the XG Mobile which is a eGPU that runs uh, up to uh, RTX 3080. And this has display out, display port outputs, and um, I think you can project up to three monitors. And essentially, when you bring it back home, you dock it to this, and you've got yourself a full-fledged gaming, gaming PC device. And uh, that kind of explains why it's priced appropriately and if you want to get the duo the both the bundle i think you're looking at easily thirteen thousand, right it was the yeah. price i told you thirteen thousand thirteen thousand yeah it's actually insane. thirteen thousand it, it it's insane it's insane but essentially i think what you're what you're considering is that you that is including the price of a um of a gaming pc a laptop put together. Is that right? And a tablet, essentially, because it's a two-in-one device. Um, so I think if you count those three things and if you were to... Gee, I can't yeah. see you. Are you there? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So essentially, if you count those three things, right? Like, let's let's try to, like, to reason... To make it reasonable... A Galaxy S Tab 7 or an iPad is going to cost you about 4,000 bucks. Um, and that's a decent tablet with proper performance. So that's 4,000. A decent laptop starts at about three. So that's about seven. And that leaves you another um, what, four, five, five K for a PC. If you ask me, um, for our personal opinion, don't bother with the Flow X13 because it it just doesn't um, financially add up and make sense to me because being that it's a laptop, it's obviously not going to last as long and it is neither upgradable to be future-proof by any context. The RAM is not upgradable. The graphics card, I don't know if you're going to be able to push it on with years later with a different graphics card. But but yeah, what do you think about all this when you compare the GPD win and the Flow X13? It's a weird comparison, but like essentially they're kind of the same proposition, right? Like they kind of fall in the same category. Yeah, it's like a handheld uh, portable device that you can connect to external graphics cards and use as full-fledged gaming PCs if needed be but at the same time you yeah. can carry it around anywhere and still be able to run some games I'm 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 just genuinely amazed at like how much attention is being put into the gaming community, the the gaming market, it's like that they're, they're appealing not to one level of gamers here. They are appealing to the gamers that want to game at high resolutions, so like, you need stronger graphics cards. And at the same time, they are appealing to gamers that just want to have a decent gaming experience. 
Yeah. It's a, it's a, you can see that there's a sense of direction that most companies are headed. Asus is a pretty big company and they've been in the business for a long time. So for them to consider, like this device doesn't have a competitor at the moment, right? There isn't a two-in-one portable device that is also capable of pretty decent gaming at this point of time. But um, it has sort of like kickstart the trend of whether... Um, other companies are going to follow through, you know, whether Lenovo and HP are also going to come up with their portable devices and, uh, and yeah, like the idea of an eGPU. <coughs> Excuse me. But this is, a, this is very interesting. I mean, in terms of, um, what's the word? Uh, what do you call the study of people? Oh my God, the word is like, it's such a common word. Everyone, everyone says it. Some reason I can't remember it. The word that means the study of people. Yeah, never mind. But my my point is that humans are in nature very very territorial. They're not very um, nomadic. They don't um, move around as much. They like sticking in one place and calling it making it their 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 home. They are very own territory, which is the inherent idea of PC versus handheld device. So now you'd be able to carry your things around everywhere, making it more portable, making you more flexible in your movements. You don't have one territory. Essentially, you'd be able to move anywhere and fix uh, fix your your tiny tablet slash handheld device and project yeah. across whatever displays at wherever at any point of time that's right Nishan people peopleology yes. yeah yes thank you Elena anthropology is the word I was looking for anthropology people so, peopleology I like, I like people oh my god but yeah, like, so yeah we, we are shifting from a from a territorial mindset from a territorial behavioral aspect into a more yeah. flexible behavior. At least based on what I'm assuming is, go- is going to follow suit when this hits the market. Because that is the only kind of people that I would assume would buy a device like this. That you want to be able to carry around your gaming experience wherever you go. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's the idea that the trend that we're seeing starting to boom is that you want a device that is light. I see a lot of YouTubers now when they hear a laptop that's 1.2 kgs, they refer to that as the standard of what a laptop should weigh. And and good two three years ago, that is not a thing. Like 1.2 kilos of a laptop, that's like why would you like the lightweightness of a laptop was never considered of, as a factor. Like I can't unplug it now, but there's a wait I can. Yeah, like this is a Toshiba satellite that is as thick as can be for a laptop, and and that's just, and that's just pretty insane, you know, because nobody would make think this as a portable device, but now the the market for it and the urge for it has become a, really a thing. So it is exciting to see whether they'll follow through. Oh my god. Here's to here's to handheld yeah. devices and portable devices. I'm probably going to stick to um, the customizability aspect of having a PC around for a while, just because I like the immersive experience that you can get from having a monitor. And I also kind of like the aesthetic of yeah. having, of having a PC. You know, just having a CPU that glows in the dark. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it it may be mainstream, <laughs> it may be a millennial thing, but yeah, I'm a millennial. It's what makes me what I am. Individuality. <laughs> am I right? Oh, God. this guy. I mean, seeing um, glowing everywhere, it's like it's <laughs> shit now. Like I can't live without it anymore. Yeah. But I th- I I that's a, that's a that's a factor that I appreciate as well about PCs and I've grown to appreciate. It's the fact that you can always just plug it out. 
throw something new in and you've just upgraded your system for one tenth the price of what it would take. If if I were to, if let's say the Ryzen 8000 series comes out in the next three years, imagine how obsolete this this laptop CPU is going to become. And and when you've invested almost 13,000 ringgit, then it becomes a question mark as to whether this was worth the purchase so rather than just buying a CPU and throwing it into your gaming PC. And be like, okay, yeah, cool. I don't need to change my motherboard and and my RAM stick for everything, you know. I can't even push this this guy up to more than 16 gigs of RAM. And being that the market is going where Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge just eats up your RAM, I don't even know if 16 gig is going to be enough in the next year or two. Like, <laughs> what, what I will never understand <sighs> is that on the on the S21 Ultra. Um, you have 12 gigs of yeah. RAM, and out of 12 gigs, even if you don't do anything, six gigs is constantly six gigs are constantly being used just for like system processes. And right. Out of like uh, for my particular model, I got the 256 uh, storage option. Out of that, 50 gigabytes yeah. is being used for system apps alone. I I I I've downloaded probably three. Yeah. Apps. Four apps like Instagram, uh, Spotify, and like those basic things. And somehow my storage, okay. 50 gigs of my storage is taken up. So what about the people that get, that got the 128 gigs version? That's like half their storage. Exactly, exactly. Now I'm a I'm a user of a phone that runs 128 gigabytes, and at all times. Um, 50 gigs of RAM has been consumed, and and that is after I've cleaned out the device from all the pictures and and remove all the apps that I barely use and everything, and it somehow is still at 50 gigs. So as your storage grows, so does how much the system assumes it needs. You know, it's just like oh, there's more. I'm just gonna have some more. Like it's an Oliver's twist of just cycle <laughs> more RAM, more more more. more it's just more content I see I see the, oh, you're getting okay. for your webcam rant here you have uh, pulled up some concrete so evidence this is going to be a rant for you and me both <laughs> now G and I are both streaming this this live for you using our smartphones there's massive fireworks can you hear the fireworks I don't think they'll be able to hear mm-hmm. it because of our RTX voice that cancel out that cancels out anything uh, other than our voices okay 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 sorry coming back to this um, G and I are both streaming this live stream using our smartphones like we have to USB tether or Wi-Fi stream it using our smartphones because if we were to use our webcams, this look, this stream would look like it came out from 1997 on a handheld camera, and the buzziness and the fuzziness, and, and it's just, it just. If they want come to on, an actual example, you can. Yeah, I could totally pull that up for you all. What my webcam looks like as compared to what my smartphone looks like. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that would be very much appreciated. And while G sorts that out, my logic has always been that with G, uh, with G's new smartphone, the video is out on the YouTube, by the way. Um, you can see that for the size of just a tiny itty bitty notch, they managed to fit a 40 megapixel camera that records at 4K 60 hertz at all time. That's a front camera, mind you, and. And they did a hundred times zoom on the back camera, but you're telling me that a huge ass webcam cannot record more than 1080p at shit quality. Like, like it's just like what? I'm gonna sneeze. Bless you, good sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh man. Here we go. <laughs> So as you can see, this is what uh, my webcam looks like. Should I? Yeah. Can you put it up above your phone? Okay. So you can they can see directly what what the comparison is going to look like. In quality here. Yeah. Like that's insane. I don't know whether it's because of my focus or can I focus? Oh. No, this is our focus. This is the best focus I'm going to get. Right. 
it certainly looks better on my phone than it looks on my webcam. And it, this wasn't a cheap webcam. Exactly. That's. <laughs> It is not, and that's why that's why I brought up the Lazada page because if you just search webcam, you're just going to be thrown by all of these um, brandless, nameless webcams that offer you 1080p, uh, 2K recording, 4K even some of them, but um, you just know that they are not going to be offering you anything remotely close to the quality that you get from merely using your smartphone. And here's the thing, right? These all look appropriately priced, I would say, for for what you think a webcam should cost. And now let's pull up um <laughs> let's pull up Logitech, right? Just that immediate so, price jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> So if you're looking at a 4K webcam, just generally a 4K webcam, the the only option you're getting is the Logitech Brio. And ladies and gentlemen, you can get like the number of things you can get for a thousand bucks. The opportunity cost of a thousand bucks when it comes to merely being a webcam. And mind you that this is still shit quality. Like it shoots 4K at like 24 frames per second for you. And, and that's just like, why? Why hasn't this industry move to any bit the pandemic kicked in video calls became the norm and let's, yet we have shit webcams let's help put this into a bit of perspective so i read nishan's comment saying that he doesn't think that um the webcam that i was that i just displayed was uh, is is that bad but my the the reason i feel like it should be better is because the cameras that you see on your phone they're significantly smaller they're significantly smaller and they shoot at higher resolutions, they have bigger sensors. And I get that it comes as part of the phone, so the software of the phone is what makes um, the the video capture better. But at the same time, like we have so uh, we have drivers in our PCs that can be, that are that that can be built to enhance um, webcam webcam capture quality. But that's not the point. The point is that the hardware yeah. itself it's not there. You're not even getting the minimum specs here. Like, like this webcam is supposed to be capable of 1080p, but what you were looking at was probably like 360. There's no way that was like 720. And exactly. And and to add on to that, just to add on to that, oh, a smartphone, right? The camera is not its primary purpose, and overall user experience is what they're going for. A webcam's purpose. It's merely to just process high quality image and send it to the internet for video call purposes or streaming purposes. How is it that people are expected to pay a thousand dollars surplus for what you what I would claim to be bare minimum quality? Like, <laughs> ah, my goodness gracious, it's ridiculous. And and even laptop laptop webcams. I think the only one that is actually dismissible is the MacBook webcams. They are pretty decent. But even then, you know, look at the cameras uh, Apple makes for their iPhones and look at the cameras they throw into their MacBooks. Like, like why? Why? For some reason, no one seems to care about the appeal of a webcam. I think you and I are probably a very small niche here that wants to get a high quality webcam. For most people, it's like, oh, if it's like 720p and you can see my face, it's decent. No one is using webcams to record video here. No one is using it to for video capture purposes. They yeah. People use cameras for that or, or smartphones for that. But I think this particular niche, which is like people like you and I who occasionally stream, then there are like fireworks everywhere. Like my, if you can just, look, I don't know if you can tell from, yeah, you can see it flashing on my screen, like somewhere around here. It's because my, my neighbors. I can see it. They have those yeah. fireworks that hang. Hey, happy Chinese yeah. New Year, guys. Happy Chinese New Year. Oh. oh my god, yeah, happy Chinese New Year. <laughs> this stream has just gone past midnight, but yes, happy Chinese New Year. I just overlooked it. Very good. Uh, RTX voice doesn't capture the. My God, but but like, if it does, you'd have a lot of trouble speaking. It's gonna be a lot of background noise because it is shining through this. You're gonna hear fireworks. Yeah, it is really loud outside. Like I can hear a lot of noise outside. I'm really glad that the mic isn't picking up any of it. Uh, 
<laughs> but you but you know gee, i would expect the, the tech to trickle down you know when when web when smartphone cameras become so easy and so cheap to make to make a decent enough camera i would expect the tech to trickle down into other industries as well but man i guess not you know just <laughs> i think for people who are going to record videos for youtube or for streaming purposes they they are they are going to invest in cameras and if they can't then you have to deal with having low quality webcams which is essentially what you and i have found an alternative to which is using our phones and somehow broadcasting it into this thing and getting it sorted in a way that most people won't do exactly in fact like being able to live stream just you and i at the same time having your your um, screen capture brought up here is kind of a big deal <laughs> the fact that we managed to do that it is I mean, at least with the amount of uh, hardware that we have, the basic hardware that we have. It the that's, that's the thing. I think it's very impressive when you compare when you con- when you counter the fact that we are doing this on on on. I mean, my my PC is pretty budget for it's this one, except it's graphics card. Thanks to you, but uh, when you compare all of those things put together, it is. It is um, impressive that the Skype encoding is still my most impressed feature. The fact that it's pulling the Skype call and casting it here, and I'm running really smooth on on your screen right now, rather than just a screenshot of my screen running at four four frames per second and my robotic voice. <laughs> I, I I don't get how it does that, but it's doing it. So I'm not complaining here, which is why you don't see me complaining about the the yeah. shifting of sizes of Uwen's window because like. The fact that he's even here, somehow using this software that we're using is awesome. Skype, thanks for that. Thanks for for being able. To, oh shit, he became small again. Tang very tajam. Yeah. Okay. So what I wanted to show you when he comes to the highest of end on the other end of the spectrum, oh, right? Oh wow. Were, Hello. Yeah, I, I'm going to be able to explain to you why it's doing that. why uh, it keeps shifting in size okay so what? just for the benefit of our listeners this is what i think is going on it's that the bit rate keeps shifting up and down so when that happens the resolution at which your video is being broadcasted changes high to okay. low to lower so the reason it becomes smaller is because it's retaining the resolution but like it's retaining the the resolution of the of the right. video but because your camera's resolution is uh reducing so it's becoming smaller which is why when i expand it back and then your if let's say our our internet suddenly becomes better so the rest goes up then it suddenly expands yeah bigger. right i i noticed that because sometimes i look like i'm like i'm 16 by 9 and sometimes i look like i'm a bit boxy and <laughs> Is that is that what you're no, is that what you're trying to say? Sixteen by nine. You're definitely sixteen by ten at all times. It's not about the it's not about the okay, aspect okay. at all. It's just about the resolution. All right. Okay. That is interesting. Well, I don't know. I I mean, I hope for the next time we do this, we we find a workaround that just sort of locks everything in one place. Um, I'll try to troubleshoot all of this. Um, but moving on. Yeah. Um. Okay. So the Sony Alpha One, which is the first or one of the first mirrorless camera that records at 8K. Um, and it's a 50 megapixel sensor. And this one stood out as to the size of it and its ability to record 8K footage um, without limit. So usually you you are able to record 8K footage for like 30 seconds, and then the sensor heats up so much that the the camera shuts off. But this is offering its ability to to record 8K footage, and it has um, what what is Sony famous for? Their eye tracking eye tracking autofocus and I remember a time when we were looking just, for uh, for a camera so for for this purpose, and like we were very attracted to the all of Sony's cameras for that matter. All of their cameras have the eye eye tracking feature, even the A one A one thousand, yeah, A one thousand. But yeah, this is insane. The Alpha one is insane. Yeah. 
trying to see if we can let's see if we can watch this oh yeah this is a sony official introduction let's watch this yeah can you hear it no i can't for some reason okay Okay, okay, I don't know, I don't know how we're going to fix, fix that. that. But, but I'm just going to do a quick peek in through, through the, uh, uh, what they're what offering. They're offering. Okay. It is pretty in- I mean, it is pretty insane to think that it zooms in at, at this quality and, and holds it there. I don't know what the stream quality is like for you, but this is pretty insane. It's very low refresh rate for me. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's severely affecting your. Then it's just kind of defeating its like point. Yeah. Plus, you can't hear it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Well, we, 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 I guess we got a few things to work on. Though. If we learn how to video stream <laughs> on our live stream. <laughs> It, it's but, working fine before we started mm-hmm. the stream. The reason it's, it 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 uh, struggles with during the stream is because it, it takes up a lot of bandwidth. And for some reason, Malaysia has crappy Wi-Fi. Oh my God, why is our Wi-Fi so bad? I will never understand. My God, this is a thing that I will never get. US has gone past to 10 gigabyte internet, and here we are with the. 100 MBS or I still can't get a gigabyte internet at home other than if you use a time network and that's only for apartments <laughs> oh my god it's insane well, we're about to hit the one hour mark here on our live stream so uh, I'm just gonna wrap it up real quick and uh, thank uh, you guys, for whoever is here watching us, Nisha and Lina, uh, anyone else who joined us, uh, we hope you enjoyed just uh, sitting around listening to us rant about tech. That's what we do. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was a, it was something that we enjoyed doing on the first try, so we just figured why not, you know. Uh, and... <laughs> And yeah, we we really hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was it's also still a trial run, I would say. There's a lot of things to work on and brush up in fluidity and whatnot. But um, we thanks for staying, guys, and um, we will catch you on the next episode of TED Talks with hey, UNG. That is true. But then. That is true. I will be in a different location. You will be in a different location. So we would have to figure this out. So if anybody listening knows how to figure it out, how to prevent given screen from shrinking and expanding and shrinking and expanding, please do leave a comment in the comment section below or DM us. And you know what? Do check out Yuvan's channel, Yuvan Kundram on YouTube. He has some quality content there too. I think you really enjoy it. It gives you a, in, a perspective of Yuvan's life that nobody else can through the lens of Yuvan's humor. It's a side view of me studying. It's a side view. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, but yeah, I mean, I think that's all from, from me and G tonight. Um, can you try going to the split screen just to see how bad the distortion is? <laughs> it's, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. I'm, I'm seeing pixels here. I'm seeing squares. <laughs> I'm seeing squares also. Like, I'm seeing me in, like... I look blurred, but I'm focused. <laughs> I'm blurred.
we have to figure this out. Why, 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 why does it reduce quality? <laughs> but at least, right? At least th- in this particular scheme, it doesn't shrink your video. It just reduces the quality, keeping you in the same um, size. But in the other one, it reduces the size every time the resolution yeah. drops, which is something that I don't quite understand. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit to figure out. But I mean. Till then, guys, we'll 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 work on this. A lot of a lot of forum scrolling to do. <laughs> Till next time, guys. Take care. And, you know, just um, bye bye. Yeah. Oh my God, the, the the camera resolution is so high. You guys can probably count the hairs on my face. <laughs> <laughs> you have expanded beyond beyond comparison. Yeah, your face is just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We we won't put you through this any any longer. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Why why is it doing that? <laughs> <laughs>